Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day 13 of the Valentine's Day card series. Today I'm going to be using this adorable stamp set by Hello Bluebird. It's called Besties. And I fell in love with the images of this little bunny and the bear. While it's not a traditionally Valentine's Day stamp set, I did want to make some more friendship type Valentine's Day cards. So I thought this was perfect. I'm starting out by cutting down some Arches watercolor paper, and I'm cutting it to be a quarter inch larger in each direction than an A2 card. So this is four and a half wide by five and three quarters tall. I'm stamping the bear and bunny kind of walking away image. And I first kind of positioned that with the um, outer uh, cloud shape underneath because I'm stamping the bear and the bunny first. I'm using some antique linen distress ink. I'm going to be doing some no line watercoloring today. And this is a great ink for that because it's pretty pale. And also because it is a distress ink, it reactivates with water. So the line will kind of lighten a little bit as I use it as well. So here's that kind of cloud shape. And as I ink up this stamp, I'm going to just not ink up that line right in the middle so that nothing overlaps the bear and bunny. I do get a little bit of a line, but once I start painting, it's going to go away completely. This was just a quick way for me to get this stamping done without having to mask off areas. So I stamped each of these twice so I could get a really good line, uh, mostly so that you could see the line on video. But if I was going to be doing this on my own and I was not videoing, I probably would have stamped it only once and just had very, very faint lines. Starting out with some tumbled glass and also a little bit of broken china. And these are the two blue shades I'm gonna be using for that kind of sky cloud shape in the background. So I'm using a size two round brush from Silver. This is their black velvet line of brushes. Um, if you've been watching my watercolor videos over the last year or so, um, I've come back to these Silver black velvet brushes. I used them years ago and kind of stopped using them for whatever reason. And I've rediscovered my love for them because they are so excellent. So um, I'm gonna be using that number two for most of this, but I wanted a slightly larger brush, so I did switch to this Zen brush from Royal and Lane Nickel. All right, now I'm going to be using some Hickory Smoke. I'm going to be painting the bunny first, and I'm using black soot as a little bit more of a shadow area. So I put a line of color down and then get water on my brush and spread that color. I'm mostly just trying to get the shapes defined with all the different colors. So I'm putting on more of that gray and I want to make sure that I have a good contrast at the edges. That's how you're going to make your no line coloring look its best because you want the line to disappear. And in order to do that, you're going to have quite a bit of definition at the edges of each of these shapes. So as I add more of this black soot, it starts to define the line without having the line actually drawn there. It's kind of a cool technique and I really, really love it. I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, no line uh, watercoloring or, or coloring with Copics even uh, can be a little bit daunting. So this is a little bit of a larger image with two characters. If you're going to start out and try your hand at no line coloring, try something a little bit smaller. I think something like a present, like a gift for a birthday card would work really well because you're only coloring one image. I also like to tend, I like to, uh, paint like, people or animals, something really cute and kind of illustration-like, you know, like a kid's illustrate, illustrated picture book. I like to do things like that because I think that looks fantastic with no line watercoloring as well. All right, so I'm painting this bear and I used Scattered Straw and Vintage Photo for the really nice colors. It, the bear reminds me of Bunny the Pooh, and the colors I chose just went right along with that. I didn't mean to make it like that, but it just turned out that way. So I'm using that vintage photo for the, the darker areas. I'm going to be painting the bear shirt with seedless preserves. I'm going to put down just a basic coloring using seedless preserves, making sure to have the darker shades in uh, right on those edges, and it's going to define the area. 
I really love Sulish Preserves. I think it might be one of my most favorite colors out of the whole Distress line. I like Sulish Preserves and Chip Sapphire. Those two colors together are just beautiful. So I'm painting that in. And I'm going to take mustard seed and I'm going to start painting the bunny shirt. I really struggled with getting kind of the color that I was envisioning in my mind for this. This mustard seed was a little bit too bright, so I thought I'll bring in some fossilized amber. And as I brought in the fossilized amber, it wasn't changing the color enough. And I decided I wanted to have a little bit more of an orange look, so I brought in spiced marmalade and just did sort of a glaze of spiced marmalade over the top and that really added a lot of orange to that shirt and it was that was more of the rusty orange color that I was thinking of. I grabbed some crushed olive and started to paint the grassy area um, underneath our two friends here. I also added some mowed lawn just to bring that grass color back up to a nice grassy green. Mowed Lawn is an aptly named color because that's exactly the color that you get. I'm taking picked raspberry and I'm going to start painting the little tulips that are off to the side of each of these characters. Um, I added pink on one side and pink on the other side since there's four tulips on one side. I'm going to grab a couple other colors. I'm using mustard seed for one of the tulips. I'm also going to use wilted violet, which is a bright purple. It's really beautiful. And then I'm going to grab that spice marmalade once again, just to bring that orange shade into another area of the painting. I'm grabbing some uh, peeled paint. It's a nice green shade for the leaves and stems on the tulips. Just hitting, with that, hitting that with my heat tool to dry the area so that as I paint the leaves on, I don't have any wet areas. So I'm continuing on with those leaves, drawing in very, very thin lines for the stems. And we're almost done with this. We're just gonna add a little bit of a shadow. I'm using some more of that peeled paint to add a little bit of a hint of a shadow underneath the bear and bunny. I'm hitting that with my heat tool. And then I'm gonna add some detail onto the shirts. I'm using the very tip of that number two round brush just to put on some stripes using more seedless preserves. And then I'm gonna grab a white gel pen and put dots onto the bunny's sweater. I think it looks so cute and playful. Hit that with my heat tool to make sure everything is dry. And then I'm gonna move on to creating the rest of the card. I initially stamped my greeting right over the top, and then I kinda of decided I didn't like how it looked and it needed to be more defined. So I stamped my greeting on some black cardstock, embossed it with white embossing powder, and then popped those greeting strips up on some foam tape. So I just cut really thin strips of foam tape and adhered that. So now I'm gonna cut this down to be a slightly smaller area. I'm using the Deckle Paper Trimmer from Tim Holtz and Tonic. This is a really interesting trimmer. This was the first time I'd used it. I kind of fell in love with it. It puts this, um, well, Deckle edge on, the, on your edge of your cardstock. It gives it more of an organic look. And I think you can make this even more deckled and distressed looking if you wanted to rough up the edge after you cut it with this trimmer. It's kind of a, um, a fun way to get a little bit more of a watercolor edge. That's what it reminds me of, the edge of watercolor paper when it's made before it's cut down. So I trimmed this down quite a bit so that it would fit on a card. I cut it to three and three quarters by five inches. And then I used some Nina Desert Storm environmental cardstock for my card base. I scored that at five and a half to create a vertical card and then put some foam tape behind my watercolor panel and press that down onto the card front. It wasn't quite centered, so I trimmed that off with a ruler and a craft knife. And then here's the finished card. I love how this turned out. Like I said before, it's not a traditional Valentine's Day card, but it is loving and I think it'd be great for a friendship card. Wanted to share that with you guys today. So on screen, I've got three more videos for you to check out. These are the, going to be the three most recent videos in the Valentine's Day card series. I hope you'll check those out. Just a reminder that the last day of the Valentine's Day card series is this Friday. I will not be going live this Friday. I'm in the middle of moving house, so I won't be available, but I will have the video posted for you that morning. 